Yes, sir. What's the deal, everybody? It's your boy, iMac, welcoming you to the Leisure Time Podcast Sports Talk, where we discuss some of the hottest sports topics going on in the world. Before or after you watch this video, please subscribe to the Leisure Time Podcast LLC YouTube page so you won't miss none of our content. Also, to those who can't get to YouTube, please go download our audio versions or listen to our audio versions on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud. Thanks. Yes, sir. What's the deal, everybody? And welcome to the second installment of X's and O's presented by CoolFan.com, man. Hey, before you even watch the video, please go subscribe to our YouTube page, The Leisure Time Podcast, our Apple Podcast, our SoundCloud, right where on Podbean, The Leisure Time Podcast. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Also, subscribe to CoolFan.com as well for all things cool, okay? Hey, big, big, huge win in Madison, Wisconsin this week. For the Washington State Cougars, right? We go down there, win by three points, 17-14 win. Gritty win, real gritty win. We needed it, man. And I'm so excited for these Cougs. I'm so excited for Coach Dicker getting that big win in his hometown, right? Super excited things to come to the Cougs. I really feel that way. Look how the boys battled, right? Right? That's the thing I'm most impressed of. They battled, right? They fought hard. Uh, no complaining, right? Defense wasn't pointing fingers at offense. Offense wasn't pointing fingers at each other, right? Everybody was playing well. Everybody wanted to win, and you could tell that they played for their coach. So clap it up for that, man. I'm super proud of the Cougs for that. So offensively, right, you know, it's funny because when you hear the air raid, you just think that, oh, man, Washington State is going to score 50 points, right? Sometimes it's not like that, right? Air raid is all about spacing, right, and using the field as an advantage, okay? And, you know, I know we're all itching for those big plays, big plays, right? But – what I am happy is about is that our team is not pointing fingers at each other. It's so quick for receivers to start pointing fingers, getting mad at quarterback, quarterback getting mad at receivers, and I'm not seeing a lot of that, right? So Cam Ward, uh, pretty good game, right? 17 to 28, uh, only 200 yards, right? Threw two picks, a touchdown, right? But his presence, right? His presence in the pocket was very good, I felt. His demeanor, even when he was getting hit, was pretty good, I felt. And I think that the troops rallied around him. Uh, how about Kia? And I ain't talking about Kia the car. I'm talking about Nikia Watson, baby. Hey, he showed some good versatility, ran tough. I know he only rushed for 33 yards, but that huge reception for 30 yards in the touchdown, man, we really needed that. And I think he played well. And how about Billy Riviere, Riviere, right? Or Rivera. I hope I'm saying his name right, but man, shout out to tight end, man. Number 42, man. I'm trying to tell you, his presence is unlocking our offense. And when we really start getting rolling, it's, be, it's going to be, cut, be because of that position, being able to utilize them in the run game, in the pass game, and being that X factor we need on the offensive side of the ball, right? And then also, did y'all know that that was the first reception by a Washington State tight end in 11 years, right? Something crazy, right? Something Leach, you know, Leach used to put guys like Bobby Ratliff and Rob Lou and River Craycraft at tight end. So it's a good thing that Coach Morris actually went out there and go get a real tight end for our system, right? Um, to continue to harp on the offensive side of the ball, right? I do think that we need to find a big play receiver at the number one uh, at the number one outside receiver, right? Um, I like the screen game. I like the quick passes, man. But we got to start getting vertical, man. And we need to find the threat. I don't know who that's going to be. Is it Stribling, right? Um, you know, I like Ali, but he's playing mostly in the slot. Bell's good, but he's mostly in the slot. We need our outside guys to emerge so we can start creating more bigger plays because. Get a couple streaks completed the game, a couple deep posts, right? Those underneaths are going to open up. Those screen plays are going to open up. And we're going to be a much better offensive team. All right? O-line play. Um, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't the greatest, right? I do feel like Cam got hit a lot this game. A lot, a lot, a lot. And you can say some of that is because of him. Some of that is because of the timing with the receivers. But ultimately, it always falls back on the offensive line. Offensive line got to be consistent, got to keep them upright. They battled, they fought, and I respect how the O-line played. But you can tell that we're still developing at that uh, level of our game right there. I want to shout out a big play that happened in the third quarter. Uh, it was eight minutes left, right, and Cam threw a pick in the third quarter. I mind you, we're, you know, we're willing, we're down, right, 14-10, right? We're trying to get in the game, right? Camp throws a pick, and Lincoln Victor literally runs from the sideline to go tackle the dude that intercepted the ball and stripped it out. I just want to give some praise and some love for that play because Lincoln, man, that's a big play, and that's what being a cool is all about, right? Being there for your teammate, right? Uh, Camp throws an interception, but, hey, he didn't quit on the play. He didn't moan about it, right? He got up, ran, made a strip, and that was a big, big play. Now, now. Let's talk about that cool D because they was flying around, man. 
very gritty, very tough performance for the Cougar Washington State Cougar defense, right? Um, I don't know, man, uh, but Dickard and Caligus and all those guys had them ready to play, right? You could tell that they played for their coach. Shout out to Dayon Henley again, leading the team with nine tackles. Amani uh, Marsh uh, being undersized against this heavy tight end, heavy fullback, 12 personnel kind of team, right? Being an undersized kind of nickel Sam backer, right? This game, he played his butt off. He played his butt off, had five tackles. Uh, very impressive with the five tackles. And what I like the most about Marsh is you can tell he's not a complainer, right? Uh, some dudes that could be undersized at that nickel position don't want to be out there taking on tight ends, don't want to be out there taking on fullback. But Imani did it uh, very well, and I appreciate his effort. Uh, Dean line-wise, wasn't a lot of huge plays, right? Uh, wasn't a lot of huge plays. Uh, late, we started to make some plays, right? But I love the consistency and the get-off of the D-line, right? This game wasn't about D-line making plays. This game, we had to eat up some blocks, free up the linebackers, and I think the D-line did an excellent job, right? Because like I said, Wisconsin coming out of 12 personnel, if you don't know what 12 personnel is, that's one running back, two tight ends. They're motioning them. They're pulling their center. They're pulling their guard. They're pulling their tackle. They're running outside zone, 235-pound running back. That's a lot. That's a lot, right? That's a lot, man. And um, I think our defense really hold up, held up very, very well. Um, defensively, my player of the game has to be uh, Smith Wade. Um, I just liked his feistiness all game, right? He only had a tackle, an assist tackle, didn't get a pick. But his feistiness, how he competed against the receivers, I really think that that sparked the defensive play. And he did an excellent job, right? Excellent, excellent job. Also, defensively, right? Defensively, right? I feel that in the second half, we showed something that we haven't showed in a long time, right? We only held them to three points, man. That's a good Wisconsin offense, a good run game, good play action pass. The quarterback wasn't that bad, right? So just to hold a Big Ten team, ranked number 19 in the nation, just three points in the second half, man, kudos to them, kudos to them, right? Special teams. I got to talk about it. I know last time I didn't talk about special teams, but this week I did. Uh, I do. Um, Renard Bell had a great return, right? But other than that, Man, we got to get better with our field position game. I feel like the punt game team could be a little bit better. Our coverage units could be a little bit better. And we just got to overall get a little bit better in the special teams aspect of the game, right? All in all, right, we got the W. I'm not complaining too much about it, right? But it, the, the beautiful thing about getting a W, right, and, and, and still having corrections is that you got the W and you can get these corrections. If you would have got the L and still had to make corrections, that's a whole nother kind of demeanor, a whole nother temperament in the meeting room, right? So what we're going to do first is we're going to break down some offensive players. Let's get it. All righty, guys. So the very first offensive play I wanted to talk about is this one, right? So this isn't the key, key play I wanted to shout out, but this play right here led to the one of the biggest plays of the game that ultimately led to our first touchdown of the game, right? So, like I tell, I've been telling you guys, man, the power of this tight end position, right? Having this tight end position right here allows us to have a dual threat at all times in every play, right? They don't know if it's a run or they don't know if it's a pass, right? Usually in the past, we're always in our dust, our deuce, our dub set, right? Um, you can kind of just leave five people in the box and try to play it that way, right? But when you bring in this tight end right here, especially at this wing back position that can go cross block, right? That can cross play action to the flat, right? It allows more linebackers and guys in that front seven to stay in the box, right? And it ultimately allows our receivers to get to that second level, find some space, get open, easy completion, right? So the very first play we ran, so this play, the very first play we ran before we get to the big play is this one, right? We run something like a, 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 a stick route, I guess, like kind of like a sick kind of sell route. You know, I'm not an offensive-minded coach, but it's something like that, right? So what had happened was we motioned this running back out the backfield, right? We motioned this running back out the backfield. Once we motioned, and I believe it was Jenkins, too, once we motioned Jenkins out the backfield, right? Right? Now these linebackers get wider, right? They get displaced, okay? And now they're all thinking pass, all right? So what we did with our receiver right here, our wide receiver right here, right, our tight end, he does a flat route. What this flat route does, it expands this, it expands this nickel, right? But in this case, the nickel actually, the nickel actually was in hook coverage, right? So this safety was responsible for that flat route, okay? So as the Y is doing this out route, right, we have our H who was Renard Bell. He ran a deep corner route, right? So what that deep corner route does now is take this corner and has to keep sinking because he's like in a cover three look to take that corner route, okay? And then what we did, we did like a kind of like a mini slant curl right here 
to X to Ali, and that's who Cam ultimately popped it to, right? And it's because of the power of this tight end. With this tight end going out, right, this safety has to honor that and flex out to it. Our receiver was able to get behind him, and it was an easy completion right there, right? And that got our offense moving. That got our offense moving, right? And then in the very next play, the very next play, this is what happened. So I showed the last play to lead up to this play, right, which was my offensive play of the game, right? So obviously we're in our money formation now, right, that good old, you know, flex tight end coming as an age black okay right now we're giving the illusion that guys hey we're about to run this ball right and now we got a good play action to come off of it right we're just giving them a different look that they're not no use to seeing from washington state which i really appreciate all right so what we do here now is something different right right we try to out leverage the defensive eyes right getting their eyes to look at the flash route while we have our tight end do a wheel route up the curb, right? And ultimately get the completion that set up the Nikhil Watson touchdown. So let me show you how this play worked. So Wisconsin, right, they're in the 40 front, right? 40 front, right? They got their Mac, they got their Mac now to the boundary side of the field, right? Because the tight end is there, right? Usually the top the, the defense calls the strength call based on where the tight end is at, right? So this is a strong left for Wisconsin, right? So cover three kind of team, right? They're, they didn't show nothing too crazy. They sent a lot of blitzes, right? But cover three kind of quarters team, right? Okay. So what we do now is you look at our formation, it's a little bit different, right? So see how closer the Z receiver is, right? The reason why the Z receiver is right here because we want to be able to open up space on the boundary for our wide wheel route right here, but also get this corner and free safety eyes, right? Fast and now, okay? So we got our Z receiver doing a, a post, right? Got a post, right? Now, the second thing that we do that helps open up this play, right? We swing our running back now to the flats, right? Fast, right? With that running back swinging to the, the flats fast now, right? It catches this defender's eyes, the safety, and the mic eyes, right? And get them going lateral, right? Now, we send the Y at the same direction as two, right? So now these linebackers can be thinking, like, hey, it's about to be a screen to the running back, right? But then what we do is, we will this guy. With him willing, right, this safety saw it late and started to trail. Started to trail, excuse me, and started to trail, right? So now we got this Revere, right, wide open down the pipe on the sideline, right, for a will route, right? And Cam does an excellent job throwing the ball on the money, which ultimately sets up our touchdown, right? So it's the power of the tight end, guys. It's truly the power of the tight end, right? Being able to sneak them out on wheel routes, right? Being able to crack back a defensive end on a cross bike, right? Being able to just swing them in the flats and get an easy completion, okay? The tight end is changing things at Washington State, and I truly, truly appreciate it. Let's get to the defensive side of the ball. Yes, sir. Now let's get to the defense side of the ball. Obviously, I drew up the play, right? Wisconsin comes out in 12 personnel, guys. 12 personnel meaning one running back right here and two tight ends, which is the Y and the H in this situation, okay? 12 personnel is a personnel that Wisconsin ran a lot, right? Uh, traditionally, Wisconsin is a power running team. They like being in the 12 personnel, 13 personnel, 22 personnel, right? And just running the ball, running the ball, running the ball. And a certain play they did, they had great success of mostly all the game, right? Was that outside kind of stretch to run with the center guard pulling or the center tackle pulling, a toss play with the center guard pulling. Their center is amazing, by the way. Don't know his name, but the center from Wisconsin is truly a good center, okay? But anyway, like I said, guys, this was a crucial moment in the game. It was third quarter. Wisconsin's driving. It's about third and three, third and two. They're at their own side of the field, right? Um, this play ultimately led to a missed field goal that I feel ultimately helped win this game, okay? So I'm going to show you the play and who made the play and why this play was such a crucial play. So go ahead and uh, delete those circles, right? So what Wisconsin did was they did a, 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 a toss to the left side, right? So what they did was they cracked down on these players right here with the Y and the Z, right, and the guard, and pulled this tackle and pulled this center around, right, to try to get this running back on the edge to get the first down, okay? But we played this play absolutely beautiful, guys. So we had our strong safety number 13. His name, his name's crossed, kind of slips me right now, right? Kind of slips me, right? But he made an awesome play, our strong safety. So what our strong safety do right here is shoot. He shoots this gap right here, right now. And what that does, it allows the running back to stop his feet just for a little bit and the linemen to stop their feet just for a little bit, right? And then as this receiver, this Z receiver came to try to crack 
Henley, right? Henley does an excellent job shaking, ripping, getting inside, but then going flat down the line to try to get this runner, okay? As the runner was approaching for the first down, by Henley going inside, ripping, and getting flat, he was able to meet this offensive player, right? Get a crucial tackle stop right here, okay? And this was the biggest play of the game, I felt defensively, right? If we do not make this play, and if they get this first down, who knows what happens, right? They probably score another touchdown. Now it's 21 to 10, right? Now we're willing. Now we probably won't win this game, right? But the defense stepped up in this crucial moment. And I just want to highlight the Will linebacker for making a great play, and that's uh, Dayon Henley, right? Henley, the past two weeks, have been a great, great, great player and a great addition for us. And the only reason why he didn't get player of the game this year, I mean, well, this year, <laughs> the player of the game this week is because of Smith Wade, man. I really think Smith Wade played an awesome game. All in all, guys, I think the Cools show resilience, they show fight, and they show why we're so proud of our football team, right? Um, if we continue this effort moving forward, I truly feel that we'll have a good chance, a great chance playing in that Pac-12 championship game, right? I'm looking at the talent around the league. I've seen USC. I've seen Oregon. I've seen UW. I've seen all the, all the other teams in the pack. We can compete. We can win, right? And if our defense keep playing with that effort and our offense kind of just come along with it, which it is, right, which it is, I say that it's going to be a great, great year for us, uh, Washington State Cougars, okay? Um, that's X's and O's. That's the second installment. Be, in a, be on the lookout for our next installment next week, right? This is a week-to-week -week thing. Shout out to our partners at CoolFan.com for powering this thing up, right? As always, please, guys, go subscribe to the Leisure Time Podcast YouTube page, our Apple Podcast page, SoundCloud page, or Podbean page, right? I love doing these things, man. You'll hear a lot more from iMac, man. I appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good day. Go cool.